Cathay Pacific are taking us to some pretty far-flung parts of the world this series, but we're also exploring a little closer to home. This week, I'm heading to Western Australia. There's some pretty unexpected things going on in the food scene there, and I'm keen to get amongst it. I'm Brett McGregor, and since I won New Zealand's MasterChef, I've been doing a lot of travelling. Travel broadens the mind and the palate. I want to taste intense flavours, share inspiring recipes, and make new friends around the world. I'm starting my West Australian adventure in the capital, Perth, voted one of the most livable cities in the world. It's a friendly city full of sunshine, good wine, and more recently, a rejuvenation led by good local food. And that sounds like a bit of me. To get the lay of the land, I'm meeting up with Laura Mosley, a local food blogger. Well, welcome to Northbridge. Yeah, thanks. So we're walking down William Street now, which yeah. is really where it all started. You know, some of the stores like Kukulis Brothers has been going since 1929. Yeah. And then Save Bivouac, who were pioneers of bringing cool food to a seedier part of town. Fantastic. It's funny how those um, seedier parts of town do become the yeah, hip parts to absolutely. come. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm taking you to The Standard. Are you hungry? I'm starving. Excellent. The Standard is a leader in a new and exciting revolution going on in the food scene here. And to help demonstrate what that revolution looks like, Laura's ordered us an ocean-cured trout and a beef carpaccio. That is beautiful. So the chef here, much like a lot of chefs now in Perth, are really focusing on West Australian produce. Yeah. Tuck in, hey? Yeah, come on then. Wow. I get a little hint of, what's in that mayo there? Lemon? Lemon aspen, which yeah. is locally sourced. So, okay. um, Chef would have gone out foraging the day before or the morning of. And the colour for against sure. Against the watermelon radish. Just yeah, stunning. is that what that is? Yeah. A watermelon yeah. radish. We'll swap it over, hey? Thank you. Looks like some kind of cream there with some pearls. Yeah, so that's actually wasabi cream with soy pearls. The wasabi cream is really delicate. Mm. But those little soy pearls, pops of deliciousness, slightly oh, salty and... Yeah. Both of these dishes have been absolutely fantastic, but I think I'm leaning more towards oh, this really? one. OK, I'm hooked. What an exciting notion. But of course, foraging for native ingredients is hardly a new idea. I'm meeting up with Richard Wally, an indigenous elder of the local Noongar people, to find out more. Kaya, My name's Richard. Nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you too, man. It's a pleasure to be here. I hear you're the man with all the knowledge about what to forage in this particular area. I don't um, believe it all. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you looking for today? This is one here is quite good. It's got a nice little salty taste to it. That's an amazing burst of flavour. It is. Um, you wouldn't need to use any salt if you were using that in a dish, that's for sure. No, no, it's all natural. And of course, it, it gets its salt from all the, the areas, so it goes right through the bush itself. So it's, you know, okay. na nature provides uh, most of your garnishes for you. And then Richard put me onto a completely different way of thinking. Our culture, we have actually six seasons that, that links us. So we have our we have our, you know, a season that's a fertility, then you have your, your incubation, your birth, your childhood, adolescence, and adult. But those six seasons always link into the plants. We follow the plants and they tell us when the seasons actually change through plants and flowers. Ah, here we go. Got a nice one here. Well, this is the plant here we're after, na. So nah. the na's got a nice little, little flavour about it as well. You have a try that one. Yeah. Wow. That's not as salty as the first one but it has a real cucumber kind of a, a taste to it with a lightly salted, uh, it's just a lightly salted cucumber. That is delicious. These plants now being appreciated and people are starting to understand six seasons, particularly here in Perth. And six seasons are absolutely fantastic. Uh, uh, it, it influences a restaurant we call the Wildflower Restaurant in, in Perth and, and Jed's absolutely fantastic. He's a master of taking the wild um, harvest so that people can enjoy the flavours. Well, that's amazing, mate. I can't wait to uh, get in to see him, but thank you so much, Richard, for your knowledge and your time. Kaya, why are we not a Buddha one? May the good spirit be with you. Wildflower Restaurant is perched on top of an historic building in the middle of the city. It's taken Perth by storm with its farmer and forager-driven menu. And it turns out the guy driving it all is a Kiwi, Chef Jed Gerard. 
Today we're going to cook our signature emu dish, so it's salted emu with emu apples, which is a native berry, and those lovely coastal greens that you just went and collected. So I'm going to get you working on the seed greens. To pick that, just okay. the little fingers off the end there. Okay, so I'll I've get... got a spider here, yep. so do you want me to just chuck them on there, blanch them? Exactly. Up? You know, one of them tastes a little bit like salty cucumber, yep. and the other one is kind of like a sea bean. And then just straight into the ice straight water. Straight into the ice to shock them. The next job, we need to salt the emu. So this is the emu loin from the breast part of the emu. Okay. And then we've got to put that in some salt for 24 hours. So how much salt do you think I should use here? We want to generously cover it because okay. it will actually dissolve as all the moisture comes out of the emu. So this is um, a wattle seed pumpkin nickel. So we're just going to do a nice uh, rough dice on that. Just like into small little wedges? Yeah, into small little wedges. Straight into nice hot foamy butter. So while that's happening, we're going to make our dressing. So this is an emu apple. It's a little native currant, and it's actually what the emus eat. It's one of their favourite food sources, and it has a beautiful flavour. Oh, wow. Intense. Yeah. Clove-like. Exactly. But sweet. Yeah. Really sweet. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. OK, straight in with Perfect. the bread. Perfect. In with the bread. This is a dressing that we've made out of raspberry juice and beetroot. Great colour. I think that bread's done, actually. We can take those yep. off. Yep, very crispy. Good job on that. <laughs> yeah, I get all the tough yeah. jobs. <laughs> <laughs> this is the emu 24 hours later, so you can see how it's wow. really been preserved and how the native Noongar people would be able to carry this around with them in the desert for weeks on end. Yeah. So we're just going to do a nice dice on that, just as we would like a beef tartare, for example. OK. So back in, back in New Zealand, something you could use Emu is most probably not readily available, unfortunately, but venison would work really well with this. Okay. If you don't have the native berries, you could use blueberries, for example, would be really nice. Okay, perfect. So we'll just pop that in here with the bread. We've got some fresh horseradish, which is going to give it a beautiful little bit of peppiness. Parmigiano Reggiano, which is a beautiful hard cheese from Italy. This is going to give it that savoury umami flavour, yeah. as well as a bit of salt. A lot of people think of seasoning, they just think of salt. But Absolutely. There's a hundred ways of seasoning something without salt. This is shallots cooked over jar, so okay. it gives it a sweet, smoky element. This is just a sherry dressing, so it's one part sherry, sherry vinegar and two parts olive oil. Okay. That's just going to bring it all together. And these are the onions. Okay, so, so all you've done there is just blanch those in water for how that's long? That's right, for two minutes in okay. salted water. So now I'm just going to get you to get the mixture and just put them into each onion ring. If you could smell what I'm smelling right now, you would know that this is actually going to be pretty spectacular. This is an onion ash, so we've taken the skins of the onion that yep. we cooked over the jar of wood, and we've made a powder. We can be quite liberal with this. It, it brings it back to how the um, local Nyungas used to cook over fire, so I wanted to bring an element of that into the dish. Here you go, Chef. Fantastic. So the finishing touch is a microplane of a little bit of fresh horseradish on top. So we're going to get that contrast of the black and white. So now we're going to plate up. So we see we have all the different the colours, the black and the white. We have Amazing. the softness, the crunch. This is an emulsion made out of fried onion oil. So now our beautiful greens. It's the first time that we've had some tweezers being used in oh, a dish. Is that right? I feel lost without my tweezers <laughs> these days. <laughs> OK, the finishing touch are these beautiful emu apples that we dressed in a raspberry dressing. And there we go. Wow. Beautiful. Now, Jed, whenever I'm enjoying a meal like this, I like to match it with some green tea. So I've gone for cinnamon-infused um, green tea um, because I think it's going to match really nicely with those berries. OK, great. Let's All right. see. Those little croutons first, that texture is amazing. The onion comes through, the saltiness from the emu, which is a very gentle flavour. But then you get that burst of sweetness and the, and the mellow kind of unctuous feeling from that emulsion. That is a truly beautiful dish. That's not a bad mix of that tea either. Recipes featured are available at tvnz.co.nz slash taste of a traveller. Coming up, I meet a very Where? clever dog. Where is it? Good girl. There's just something so addictive about the smell. Yeah. 
you could win a culinary escape to Hong Kong. Let Hello World and Cathay Pacific fly you and a friend to Hong Kong with return flights from Auckland, Wellington or Christchurch. Spend four nights at the luxurious four-star park hotel in a superior twin share room, plus learn how to cook traditional dim sum with a two-hour cooking class. Go to tvnz.co.nz slash taste of a traveller to enter. Good luck. I'm in Western Australia, heading south from Perth to Manjima. I've heard they're producing a beautiful aromatic ingredient here that finds its way to the tables of the world's best restaurants. Shane has agreed to let me in on the bounty, but to find what we're looking for, we're going to need the help of Bella, the Labrador. Bella, look, Bella, look. Where is it? Where, where, show me again, the where. Good girl. Wow, that was so fast. Oh, that's a good one, Bella. Good girl. A truffle. Good so, girl. why are you using dogs and not pigs? Uh, the pigs like to eat them, and dogs don't. <laughs> I can't really blame a pig then, can I? During harvest, the Truffle and Wine Company has up to 12 dogs working here, finding the truffles one by one. Good dog. Um, I've noticed that there are two different types of trees, though. Why yep. is that? Uh, hazelnuts and the oaks. Because it was an experiment to start off with, they thought, well, if we don't get truffles, we'll get hazelnuts. Well, that is a massive gamble, but when I look through here, um, things are obviously going pretty well. So well, in fact, that this orchard is now producing four to six tonnes of this tasty treat every year, making it the largest supplier of black truffles in the Southern Hemisphere. Yeah. There's just something so addictive about the smell. Yeah. After smelling the truffles all morning, I've just got to taste them. Now, what could be better than a marriage of truffles and eggs? I think it's number one. I'm going to show you a really simple uh, omelette today, but it's going to accentuate the flavour of those truffles and make these little babies taste delicious. So, three eggs. You can always tell a really good fresh egg because the white just clings on to the yolk. Now, to enrich it slightly, I'm just going to use one extra egg yolk. Gives it a lovely colour, but I also think just makes it that little bit more decadent. Now, just to loosen that up slightly, I'm going to also add just a touch of water. OK, now just combine. Now, you may notice I'm using no salt and no pepper in this. You just keep them moving until they're well combined, and you can see that they've just changed colour, like so. Now. Pan onto a nice medium high heat. So I hit it with about half a tablespoon of truffle butter. Now this is something you can do at home with leftover truffle. You can easily put it into the refrigerator. It'll last about seven days, but if you freeze it, you can have it on tap for three months. Now you can see those beautiful little bits of really finely diced truffle in that butter. And as soon as it starts to froth, straight in with the eggs. So I just like to make sure I keep it moving at the beginning. I'm just going to simply roll it into an omelette. I want it nice and moist in the centre. I'm going to go for hardly any colour. And straight over onto my plate. Now I take a really clean tea towel and I'm just going to shape it a little bit. Now another beautiful product that they do here is truffle salt. Put that over the top. Now serve it with a little salad and I'm going to take a little bit of avocado oil with lime. Now that's just going to bring all of those flavours together. And of course, hit that with a little bit of salt as well. Now to serve, it's just about arranging everything together. Wow. Beautiful, fresh eggs. And you know what? You get that unmistakable aroma of what is a truffle. It is highly addictive and highly beautiful. Still to come, surfs up. And a dish that raises the bar. It's the best dish I've had on the show so far. 
you could win a trip to Sydney and the New South Wales South Coast. Fly to Sydney, pick up your rental car and enjoy a leisurely drive to Mollymook, where you'll spend two fabulous nights at Bannisters by the Sea. Enjoy dinner for two at Rick Stein at Bannisters, then head back to Sydney's vibrant city centre. Enjoy two nights exploring the new dining precincts, including Sydney's inner city suburb of Paddington, to enjoy dinner for two at St Peter. Go to tvnz.co.nz slash taste of a traveller to enter. Good luck. I'm three hours drive south of Perth, Western Australia, in the Margaret River region. There's an award-winning chef down here I really want to meet, who's setting the trend with local ingredients. I've heard he's a mad surfer too, so if I get amongst the surfing scene, I'm hoping I'll get to meet him. Looks awesome. Is that where we're going out, where all these fellas are? That actually looks a little bit terrifying to me out there. Ah, you'll be, you'll be fine, mate. It's not, it's not as big as it looks. Yeah? <laughs> oh, let's get into it, eh? Yeah. <laughs> This is not the chef. This is Jared, my surf instructor. It's my first time surfing, so let's hope Jared can work some magic and help me get out there. All right, so what we're going to do is put your left leg out to the side. Yeah. Like that. Beautiful. You're going to push up with the same knee into the middle. That's it. Then you're going to bring your front leg through. That's it. Then push and twist the hips. It's not harder. You're surfing. <laughs> it's a lot easier on the sand. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose. You've got to give everything a go once. I'm into it. Oh, it just goes to show a good teacher goes a long way. And my little plan worked. As local surfers know local surfers, it wasn't long before Jared tracked down chef Tony Hell. Tony, I couldn't think of a better place to have a barbecue, mate. Look at this. Not bad, is it? It is awesome. So what are we making? It's tough what we put up with it. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, i tell you what, I've got, I've got some native products in the area. It's a marin. Just hold him behind the head there, mate. So All righty. Pretty sharp. Check that out. So fresh water? Yeah, fresh water. We have something similar at home called a colder. And probably not quite as big as that, though, huh? Eh? I know, no way, eh? Oh, no. <laughs> very, very simple, mate. Very, very simple, this one. Just some garlic. And on. So you're just going to leave all the skins on for that, yeah, mate? Yeah, mate, just straight in like that. So just a uh, little rough chopping. Little shallots here as well. Pop that straight in. And then we're going to put a little bit of butter. Right, yeah. Oh, yeah, just a little bit. What have we got? We're going to put some white wine in there, but I'm not going to waste. It's <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> so we'll use a little bit in here. OK, so you've got about, what, 150 grams of butter, half a shallot, five or six cloves of garlic, yep. and what, half a cup of wine? Yeah, perfect. So lovely local Howe Park Chardonnay. Mm. Should we just sit down and watch the view and oh, talk about cooking? Come on, then. OK. <laughs> <laughs> just put it straight on the barbecue. All right, right mate. Rightio. Oh, put a little bit of spring onion there as well. A little All bit of right. extra flavour. Lid down? Yeah, lid down, because it's a weather. Keep the heat in there, buddy. Beautiful. All right, let's get on to the marin. Let's take care of this little baby. Straight in half. Uh, I'm amazed at the size of the... There's going to be a lot of meat in the tail. Beautiful. So all you got to do is make sure you take the intestine out. Yeah. So we'll give that a quick wash. So always is a freshwater crayfish. Yeah. So we'll use fresh water on this. If it's okay. something from the ocean, wash it in salt Great water. Great tip. Keep the flavour in. Beautiful. Shell side so down. Straight onto the grill. Yeah. So right. a little bit of lovely olive oil on top that you brought. A little bit of salt and pepper. Lovely. A little flavour. So we'll put a little bit of butter there as well. As you put it up here and just let it... Rather than putting little bits on, just put a big chunk and just let it slowly go through and just seep Beautiful. in there. Beautiful. I'm going to pop him up like that. Just hold him there so that butter just keeps... Yeah. Pop that down. And let's put yeah. the salad together. OK. Raw salad. A lot of people don't use it raw. No, exactly. But if you have it nice and thin like that, it's absolutely fine. And I've had it in salads before with apples and things like yeah, that. But how absolutely. are you doing it? <laughs> well, Nashi pear today. Beautiful. Just came out. In we go. All right, so you just want me to give that a mix together? Yeah. I'll tell you what we do want to do in a second as well. A little bit of pine nuts, give it a crunch. A little bit and of nutty. just been toasted? Yeah, just quickly, quickly lightly toasted. Uh, a little bit of aioli. Organic garlic. OK, a little bit of spring onion there, give it a bit of colour. All right, mate, so, so just mix that together? Yeah, absolutely. But I reckon this marin probably due for a check now. Oh, yeah, look at that. That is just, just gonna pop him beautiful. Out, like so. Wow, look how uh, beautifully tender 
and delicate that flesh is. Really is. You know, if you could honestly smell this at home, your mouth would be doing exactly what mine is, and that is going crazy. All right, so we'll just get a little bit of brioche. Okay. Nice little char grill. Beautiful, so just get a little bit of crispiness on the dish. Yeah, and sweetness as well from this. So if we were at home and didn't have brioche, any other ideas? Um, get, get brioche. Yeah? Yeah. No other. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what, I'm going to steal some more of this olive oil. Well, you yours. might as well, mate. So that's only going to take, what, 30 seconds to a minute? Yep. So there we go. Beautiful. Nicely toasted. A little bit of salad. You're getting fancy. I'm getting my chef on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give you one more surprise. Now, this, right. this is one of the latest products in WA. Look at the colour of that. This is wild scampi caviar. That is amazing. Just going to get a little bit of caviar around the edge. That is an oh. absolutely amazing colour. Isn't it just? So I've also got a little uh, local flowers here. And now for the money. Yeah, <laughs> the money shot. Oh, it smells beautiful. It's great, isn't it? Jeez, look how delicate it is as well. You were yeah. dead, right? Oh, lovely. A little chloro at the top for a bit of colour. Wow. How does that look to you? You know, you wouldn't think there. that just came off a barbecue, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> look at it, mate. Absolutely stunning. One thing missing. Oh. Fighting irons. You know, it's a tough job. I'm just going to get straight into it, no mucking around. You know, I'm just going to have a little bit of those bursts from the sea. Yeah. <laughs> Happy with that? It's the best dish I've had on the show so far. It is an absolute winner. Little burst of saltiness from that scampi. Celeriac, the nashi just gives it so much kind right. of the juiciness. Right. You know, and that poaching liquor. Yeah, it's with good the butter. Isn't it? I think I'm the luckiest man on the planet. I have truly loved my time exploring Perth and Western Australia. But what I've noticed is that the food scene here has come full circle. People are beginning to really value local ingredients, traditional food and foraging. I guess it's about appreciating and recognising what makes this place so special and amazing. And it is amazing. Hello. Very well, thank you. How are you? Check out Hello World's Deal of the Week to Western Australia. Plan your Western Australian escape with Hello World. Three-day, two-night Margaret River South Drives start from just $295 per person double share. Contact Hello World on 0800 260 260 or visit tvnz.co.nz slash taste of a traveller.